a shadow on the wall that looks like a man. No, that lamb just moved on that stand. I got movement in the cellars, I got footsteps in the hall. There's no time to waste, I better make some calls. I gotta get ready, make everything right. Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight. Hey, Party and you're invited. We got the camera set. Let's turn off these lights. Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight. This old house has a long history, it should be real, real good for activity. And we got the house wired for sound and got motion along setting all around. Got a box full of batteries ready to go and everyone's itching to start this show. Got our logo tees driving black SUVs and that one bald guy with a slick goatee. <laughs> Let's get started Hey, this is brother mine Well, there's a party and you're invited We got the camera set Let's turn on these lights Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight Hey, round up the team Let's get Our party and y'all invited. We got the camera set. Let's turn on these lights. Cause all my rider friends are goes hunting tonight. That's right. Go get them, boys. Sure. Sounds good. And welcome, everybody, to Pima TV. Welcome to Friday. November 22nd, 2013. Yep. Wow. Already. Yep. I'd, I'd always... This year just flew by. It, it really, really has. It's, it's made a whole lot of changes. Um. Real quick, March 22nd of 2014. Be sure and come and see Kim and I at the Louisiana Paracon. Um, Robin Marie will be there. Martha Decker Hazard will be there. Martha Hazard Decker. Hazard Decker. Rob Henry. Uh, T.L. Jones. Um, this is also a fundraiser uh, for the Wagon Tails Ranch, which is a... Uh, pet rescue. Pet rescue there near Ruston, uh, Louisiana, where the Paracom's going to be. And don't forget, in these holiday days, that if you're looking for gifts, you can go to... Unique gifts. Unique gifts. Of, of all kinds of natures. Yes, handmade, homemade, hand poured, dug out of the ground. Uh huh. Unique fashions that aren't the norm. Yeah. You can also go to Metaluna Boutique and Stones dot com. Um, right now, that's one of the crystal points. What we're showing right now is one of the crystal point sets that we had uh, just recently mined with our own little dainty hands. And if you're near Gladewater, Texas, don't do it online. Come and see me. Or do it online and just pick the in-store pickup option. That works, too. That way, you don't have to get out the nasty stuff for very long. And free orders on anything over 100 bucks. Free delivery. Free shipping. Not, not for free, sh <laughs> free shipping. Not free orders. Your logistics, will be, your logistics will be paid for if you order more than $100. Yeah, but not, not the items themselves. Right, not the items themselves. Let, let's not get carried away here. Hey, hey, I'm just trying to drum up some business. You get some stuff away. But tonight, folks, we are joined by a very dear friend. We've actually met him in person. It's been a couple of years, but we met him in person at a Hannah House meet and greet. He is the mainstay for the Midwest when it comes to intelligent investigation. Um, tonight we are joined by Mr. Jason Snyder. And Jason, ITAR is still an operating <coughs> function, right? 
Oh, yes, absolutely. Right very, on. very, very, very well in function. How have you been, brother? I know you. I know real life's kind of kicked you around a little bit. It's beat us around the, the bush a couple of times here since the last time we talked. But how have you been? Yeah, I haven't been too bad, man. You know, um, we've been really busy. Uh, you know, yeah, life life has definitely dealt its blows recently. Um, you know, just a lot of personal stuff going on, you know, but I'm, I'm kind of pulling myself out of that hole right now. You know, I was in uh, the hospital, uh, rushed myself to the emergency room last week, uh, thinking that I was having a heart attack. Um, so after a, a battery of tests and seven hours in the ER, I found out that, uh, you know, my, my heart's healthy, but, you know, I, I needed to slow down a little bit because it was due to a lot of stress and exhaustion and dehydration and everything else. And, you know, it just made me sit back to think that, you know, I, I take life for granted every single day and I get to, you know, take time for myself and, and you know, manage my diet up a little bit better. You know, 36, yeah. I'm not getting any younger anytime soon. So, you know, it's, it was a good reality check for me, that's for sure. Yeah. Haven't we dealt with enough heart attacks? Do you got to add to the list? I don't. I don't want to. I swear on it. I don't want to. I don't want to be part of that list whatsoever. If I can help it. Well, let me tell you something. If you go to Tennessee, three stents will cost you exactly seventy-eight thousand dollars. I, 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 I but, can tell. I can tell you that. But you could also show up one week later at the Hannah House and be ready to party. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. I couldn't believe that you showed up. You know, I, I was. Completely blown away by that. Hey, hey, you can't keep a good furball down. <laughs> right. You know, and, they, they, and I trust me, I was not allowed to do a whole lot. Sit there and look pretty. That's about all I was allowed to do. So, I mean, it was okay, but I'm I'm not gonna do it again. Well, I'm not gonna do it again, and I can't. I, I you just can't let something like that forever change. You it can change things for a positive direction. It can't completely stop you. You can't allow that. Yeah, that's true. You don't want it to control your life, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, it'll drive you crazy if you're allowed to do that. And then, you know, if it was anything, it's, you know, serious as far as health concerns in somebody's life, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and, and ITAR, ITAR is definitely still, um, we are still in operation. We're still doing very, very well. We're just choo-chooing along. Um, last investigation we did was um, back at the end of August. We went to um, Central State Hospital in mm -hmm. Indianapolis used to be the Indiana State Hospital for the insane. Um, shut down in like 72, but it was a, it's, it's a very, very large campus. They started to tear down the buildings, and they're, they're putting up uh, uh, condos and things like that over, right over top of it. So, you know, we, we felt that there was a limited amount of time for us to get in and investigate this place. Um, and, you know, before they pulled down the rest of the buildings. And, and to be honest with you, the city of Indianapolis was fantastic about it, that the cops told us that it was okay that we were on the grounds and that we were in the buildings, just not to destroy anything. Um, right. You know, so we had constant patrols all night by the police. Uh, you know, there's mounted mounted police officers out there as well. Uh, it's like eight eight buildings total on this campus, over um, you know, over sixty some acres, and uh, just a very 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 cool place to be. We spent 14 hours investigating it. Um, probably probably uh, in, in the top ten of one of my favorite investigations for sure. Wow, and, and and just so people know, let's 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 remind people, Jason. You guys don't go in. You guys are not that team that goes in and sits in there and goes, "Do you know who the president is? Do you know? Do you know? Who, did you know your dad?" No. Oh. You, you guys aren't that group. You guys go in, knowing what to ask, knowing what to do, and are not big, huge pans of provoking either, right? Well, you know, it just it just depends. Um, you know, the whole thing about it is, is that, you know, we try to go in with as much knowledge of the place as possible. Um, you know, I don't like to ever go in anywhere blindly because, you know, it's, it's much, much more easier to go into a place where you're prepared and know what to expect or uh, be, be able to actually prepare for the investigation better ahead of time. You know, that way everybody's all on, you know, on the same page. Once we get there, we know what to do. We don't have to improvise so much on site. But, um, you know, I've, I've been known to do it with a provoking. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I never do it in, in a residence or uh, a regular business. But if you do a place like, uh, say, Central State that's in shambles and it's being torn down, um, you know, I don't know that I take it to the point of being rude. Um, you know, I mean, but you know, I've been known to provoke on, on a few different occasions. And I've been I've been known, you know, when to stop too. You know, and that's that's just knowing it. You know, when you when you've taken it too far and something else has let you know that you have. Um, you, you start to become aware of the, the seriousness of 
actually provoking entities when you're out in the field, you know, and um, sometimes it works and it gets your response, you know, and that's exactly what you're doing it for. Um, and now, as, as far as, uh, you know, EVPs and questions like that, uh, you know, when we're in the field, we, we do spend an awful lot of time asking a lot of questions, and sometimes those questions do come up. You know, the thing about it is, is that while we're doing all of this, you know, we're, we're trying our, you know, our best is to, to map out an environment. Um, you know, to, to me, I believe that, you know, your, 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 your environment and in, in the, the, the location of the venue in which you're investigating um, is, is best suited if it's in its most natural, undisturbed environment. You know, so the thing that you want to do is, you know, if you can map out um, certain things, like, you know, you bring a, like a meteorology center out in an investigation, mm -hmm. you can have a head unit outside, you can have a head unit inside giving you simultaneous uh, readings throughout the night. And, you know, you get like some of these vector systems and things like that that are about 200 bucks. And it will actually take a time date stamp reading of all of your, like, your barometric pressure, your wind speed, wind direction, your humidity, you know, all of that stuff. It will give you a time date stamp both outside and inside, and I say every five seconds, and it will graph it for you. You know, and you know, a lot of times if we have some sort of a personal experience throughout the night in the investigation, we'll go back to that time frame in any of our environmental readings that, or any type of data that we're collecting, and we'll look for correlations and changes in the environment during you know, those specific instances or personal experiences that happen at that point in time in that venue. You know, that kind of gives us an idea of saying what, what's changing around us. I mean, we, we know that we live in an ever-changing environment. You know, somehow or another, the environment plays a, a, a very, very important role in uh, paranormal investigating or haunting. You know, so it's, it's, best, it's best suited for us to understand the environment better or at least try to map it and understand what an you know, actual stable environment is or actually one that may be even conducive to um, hauntings. Yeah, and, and, and document what you're doing. That, that's something else that, that I, I, I try to stress to everybody. You know, write stuff down so you don't forget, so you don't have to rely on your memory. You know, sure. and you know, a lot, of, you know, a lot of times, you know, like one of the things we used to say before is, just, you know, you have these rest of and you have cameras. Well, set up cameras to watch those cameras and have cameras that watch you and videotape or somebody in the, in the crew that's walked down and videotaping what's going on. So, you have the you know dialogue and the actual video of, of how the investigation is actually rolling along. You have to have that record. You know, I mean, it's it, it's up to every individual group and how much they actually put into um, following a, a strict process when they're investigating. But you know, I, you know, when you, whenever you, you work in science or in a lab, you you, you work these, these experiments in, in the utmost controlled states in the almost controlled conditions, in, in, in the almost controlled environments. So, you know, you try to do the same thing with paranormal investigators as far as I'm concerned. You know, you want to go and run the same process. You want to know, you know, who's breaking down what, who's setting what up, what we're going to do, you know, we're going to start doing baseline readings, we're going to start collecting data, you know, how we're going to break off in the groups or whatever the case is. You know, and you do it the same way every time, and that will eliminate contamination of your, of your research as well. Well, and, and I actually found something the other day that I thought was just absolutely cool. Um, and, and I did post it on the, the David Rountree Spirit Lab board on Facebook group. Okay. And, it, and it's actually, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it did have a spot where you could screw in um, a tripod connection, um, that standard connector or whatever that is. Um yeah. But it's a 360 degree panoramic camera, and it's in a ball. And it's actually it's actually designed for I don't want to say extreme sports, but you can actually take it out somewhere and throw it up in the air, and it actually has sensors in it that will detect when it reaches the arc of uh, of its trajectory and starts to fall. That's when it takes its picture from its highest point. But it takes a 360 degree panoramic shot of the entire room. And how many times have you had to go back and remember where stuff was at in a room? Whereas if you had this thing, you could just walk in with a tripod, set it in the middle, let it take five or six pictures, or even set it to take pictures while you're in there doing an EVP session. You know, and then you would know you would know exactly where people were in the room, 
in relation to the camera and you're the recording device. Whether or not they yawn, scratch their right. neck, or whatever. Or if they leaned over to the person when they started talking really, right. really low, you would at least see that, mate, hopefully. But I thought that was a pretty neat yeah. little tool. Absolutely. Sounds like, a, you know, I don't, I'm unfamiliar with what you're talking about, but it sounds like it's a, it's a, it's a really good camera, though. Well, and and yeah, I, I totally agree with your point. Well, and, and the whole thing about the spirit board, of course, the first thing it is, well, it'd be better if it was an IR, and if it'd be better if it did this, and it'd be better if it did that. Well, guys, they didn't design it for that, but this would be a nice, a nice, a nice starting point yeah. for you people to document. Fix it. And I guess if you were chicken, you could turn it on and roll it in the room, <laughs> and it could take. Yeah, you could. Yeah, if you were chicken, you didn't want to go in a room and set it, but then. To but me, then, if you're chicken to go in there, you don't need to be doing this anyway. Well, if you're too chicken to walk in the room to set it off, who's going in to retrieve it? True. Yeah, you know, it's true. You know, and, and that goes, and, and I know people probably think that sounded silly, but if you're that afraid when you're in a location to go into any room in that location, unless it's unless it's structurally unsafe, if you're too scared to do that, you are already leaving yourself open to take attachments home with you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's, it's all about the confidence you have when you go there. So that's why I said it, but, of course, nobody wants to nobody wants to talk about the woo-woo. That's why all the guys on my team are over 6 foot and yeah. over 250 pounds. That way I'm not afraid of nothing. Well, that way you can also have all your equipment made out of cast iron because you're not the one carrying it. True. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Hey, hey I am not a stupid woman. <laughs> no. um, yeah, so on you know, on top of uh, you know the, the investigation we did, we just got uh, notified by uh, uh, one, one of our largest news channels here in Fort Wayne. Uh, we got a um, a population here about three hundred sixty thousand people, and uh, the news channel uh, Fox fifty five WFFT contacted me about um, uh, doing an investigation and filming because they want to do a, a much special Monday segment. Uh, doing headline news on, on uh, Monday. Nice. So we're actually going to be getting into a historical landmark here in Fort Wayne called the Clyde Theater. And uh, we're gonna we're actually going to be in there investigating and filming with uh, the news crew uh, for this segment. So we're kind of really excited about that. It uh, came across and kind of fell into our laps about 9 p.m. last night. Nice. And uh, we've been ironing out the details all day. As, as you can imagine, it's been a lot of phone calls from me on my end. I worked 12 hours today already. You know, and uh, the kid came home and, and, and grabbed dinner, and I've, I've been on the phone literally all night ever since. So, well, I'm glad um, you can take a break and be with us. We, that's great, man. You know, and that's just it, too. I mean, that, that's exactly how I look at it. It's, it's a nice place. It's nice and peaceful here. And uh, to sit back and, and, and talk to two people who I consider to be very good friends and great people in the paranormal community and uh, people I, I support very well. And we support you, man. We're always behind you. You know that. Um, I, I, Thank you very much. I, I do have a question for you. I heard you've been putting together these words, and you've got them all, uh, 50 or 60,000 of them together, and you're going to try to release that next year. Yeah, actually, I've been trying to release it for a year really? already. And, you know, the whole thing about it was it was originally set for a release date of uh, summer of 2012 to begin with. Um then basically what ended up happening was is I wanted to make sure that I could promote it and I could make it around and, and schedule some events. And, you know, at that point in time, I was going through a really, really difficult time in life. And it was, just wasn't going to work out for me because I was working, you know, back-to-back -back hours. And, you know, I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make it to the events. I wasn't going to promote it the way that I wanted to. Um, and that's just it. You know, it's not about, you know, me getting this out there, just pushing it out there and just throwing it out. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I do it the right way. I try to do everything with the utmost, you know, professionalism and quality. So I wasn't really ready. And, you know, and it was one of those things where I just sort of sat back and said, you know, why be in a hurry to do this and, and do it the wrong way? So, I, you know, I postponed it until either the fall or the, the summer of, of this year. Um, and at fall of last year, actually, somebody came out with a book. Um, and I won't, say, I won't say who it is or anything like that, but it was very, very similar to the na name of my book. And um, apparently they've been looking for some time, and, and they're very, very well known in the paranormal community. So, um, you know, I, I decided I was going to change the title of my book because it was too close to my comfort. You know, and when I when I changed the the title of the book, I also ended up taking out 
um, four or five other chapters and actually re rewriting several chapters and adding new chapters into the book. Um, and now we're working on final illustrations for the cover and, um, and, and the back cover, obviously. And, um, you know, we're pretty much ready to roll with this thing in, uh, next summer. End, end of June, early July. And, and, and trust me, I want to be one of the first ones to read it, too. You, you, Jason, you know, I'll say it, this. You are, you are one of the few people that we have met in the last, how many, five years, six years? Five years. That we, that we have had respect for the entire time we've known you. Mm. <laughs> you know, because that's how it is in the paranormal community. You meet people, but eventually they do just something god-awful yeah. stupid. Not and you, everybody. And you can't. Well, not there, everybody. There but is a yeah. group of them. Yeah. There's a very, but there's, there's a very short list of people that we, we haven't lost respect for. I, I, com I completely understand exactly where you're coming from when you say that. Um, I, know, I know that we're not alone in thinking, in thinking that, actually, but uh, thank you very much for that compliment. That, uh, means, that means a whole lot to me. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to get the book out. Um, it's been long anticipated. I, I can't even tell you what the feel of this, this thing's going to be once I get it up and going. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm expecting it to do well right out of the gate. Um, and then I'm going to follow up uh, with another book right after that, probably by the following summer after that, too. So, um, But the book due out next year is going to be called Echoes of the Afterlife. Nice. And um, it's it's going to kind of it's going to kind of give a little bit of a brief history of spiritualism and uh, and, and science and, and a bridge between the two and some studies that have been going on and things some things like that and going into some of my theories, um, you know, talking about a, a little bit of, a little bit of some physics and you know some stuff that's not going to be a very very hard read but an easy read for people to comprehend and kind of understand where I'm coming from. But then it's also going to be mixed in with some stories of my own and some of the some of the cases that I've been lucky enough to be part of, and um, you know it's going to talk about the dangers of of being in the paranormal field. You know it's mm -hmm. going it's going to also be somewhat educational for those people out there who are new and just want a, a perspective, um, or you know a perspective that they can trust. You know so uh, it's it's in my mind it's going to be a book that's going to cover a different uh, a lot of different bases and boundaries, and. Um, you know, some of it may be controversial. We'll see how it's taken. And, um, you know, hopefully, though, people will just walk away with just saying, you know, it's a good read. I found it informal. And, uh, you know, I, I would definitely buy another book if you wrote one. And that's what I want people to think when they read it. Right. Well, and that, that's, I mean, I think that's why Kim and I did the whole, we started this whole network, this whole crazy mixed-up network thing that we do over here is because there was no, there was no place for anybody to go to get what we thought was reputable information. There was a whole bunch of people replicating what they saw on the shiny box, but as far as the actual free thinkers for the paranormal, there wasn't or, a place for it. Or trying to get their own right. paying show on a big network as right. opposed to just getting the information out that needed to be out there. Right. You know, and, and that's, that's why we started this over here, and I think it's... It's taken a couple of years, but people finally kind of see, you know, we, we, we're trying to get the good information out there. And if they want a reputable place with shows that are done by people that they can trust, they, they can come here. So that's what we've shot for. So I totally understand what you're trying to do with your, with, with what I'm sure is going to be a series of books. Um, I, I totally, I, I'm backing 100%. I think it's great that the people can get that information out there from somebody they trust. Yeah, and that's the you know, that's and that's the whole thing too. Is, is you know like a lot of people, I you know a lot of people they bug me a little bit about you know why why I don't have a lot of evidence out there. As a matter of fact, I I don't think that I have one single piece of evidence that's out there on the internet right now. You know, and I tell people so. You know, I I, I do a lot of time speaking publicly. You know, and I travel. You know, so if I'm putting everything out there, you know that that we have and that I have and, and putting stories out there for everybody reading. What am I going to give you when you come see me? If you want to hear my stories, and you want to hear about you know. Some of the some of the craziest times that we've had in the field, some of the most frightening times. You know, if, if you know if you want to come out and enjoy, you know, a, a 90 minutes of just pure paranormal entertainment, you know, come out and see me. You know, and, and that's and that's the way that I do it. You know, and that's just it. You know, once I get you out there in front of me, I'm you're going to walk away trusting me because I, you know, I I'm going to tell it like it is. You know, I'm not a huge network kind of guy. Um, you know, I've been approached by several networks several times over the past and, and have, have definitely turned everything down, you know, didn't want to be part of it. Um, 
Your Honor, we have a lot of things, a lot of the colleague networks are involved in what they're trying to do with the terminal field and things of that nature. You know, so I, I kind of, you know, move at my own drumbeat, you know what I mean? I, I, trust me, I totally agree with you. Well, we couldn't, you know, we, we don't post anything out there either. I, I can, you know, you can... I think we've just done one evidence, one evidence show when we lived in Tennessee. Well, but what I'm saying is, as far as the social media and stuff, oh, we're yeah, a lot like yeah. Jason. None, none of our stuff gets posted out there. Well, and Jason, would you agree with this statement that you've reached a point in paranormal researching that you don't really care what anybody else thinks? You're not doing this for everybody else. You're doing this for your own reasons. So you yeah, don't, you yeah, don't need that. that you don't Absolutely. need that. You don't need that validation from from the the Facebook trolls to. Because that's what happens. When you post something on Facebook, if there's 100 responses, 80 of them are negative. 10 of them are, yep. 10 of them are, how did you do that? And the other 10 are, that's that's a good, reasonable catch. You know, yep. so how do you, there's no way to control the trolls over there. So, uh, like like Kim said, we, we've done, I think we've done one evidence show in three years. And I don't replay it. I don't go back to it all the time. Um, our closest friends and people that we have investigated with, I do share. And everybody that I've shared our stuff with, go, wow. So I, th that's good enough for me. I don't, I don't have to have the, the the group validation. I don't think we ever. I don't think we ever had to have that. Mm -mm. Yeah. You know what I found out though is, is this. You know, I found out that you know if 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 you if you can get over the, the hump of you know, and like I said, I live in a fairly decent-sized city, so you can imagine that there's several criminal groups that are here in this town. Right. If you can get over the hump of this is a you know territorial pissing, this is my territory, you know, this is your territory, you know, we do this better, you know, look at us, you know, get over that the animosity that teams have between each other in a lot of other places. And I don't, and I know you guys know exactly what I mean when I say that. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't really have that here in Fort Wayne. That's what's great. We have probably. Four of the six groups here in Fort Wayne that all work together. Um, I'm, I'm involved in a lot of stuff that they, that they have to take care of and a lot of things that they're involved in. Um, you know, I think that the one one of the best things that I have is that, you know, I'm very, very, very blessed to be respected by a, a lot of the teams here in, in and around Fort Wayne. Um, you know, they, I found out that, you know, it's, it's not so much of what you what you captured in the field and, and the stories you have to tell, but... Uh, being there for them and working with them and, and helping them out when they have questions and, and things like that, and um, you know coming through for them in the pinch or just being involved in stuff that they, you know that they're doing and building an actual relationship with people, um, you know that's where you're going to get the most respect. And then once you have that respect, people are going to listen to whatever it is you have to say, and they're going to see it and they're going to see it in a in a, uh, in, a in an unbiased way, and, they, and they're going to actually going to. Um, you know, be able to walk away feeling like, you know, what what, what I told them or what, what that person had said to them, uh, you know, they, they feel like it's just, a, you know, you would have no problem trusting that. You know, and once you get past that with the animosity and the teams and things like that, I mean, we all help each other out in, in this town. And, um, you know, a lot of the other investigators around here in Columbia City and, and so forth, I mean, they're, they're just they're really, really great individuals, great people. And... Um, you know, I'm, I'm just really blessed to have, you know, the other teams that are here in this town, whether we investigate together or not, um, the support of them, and, and we support each other, and, and we know it's not like that everywhere, but, you know, we're real lucky to have that here. Yeah, that's a, you know, that, that that's something a lot of people, and, and Kim's talked about this before, the, the paranormal unity does exist, you know. In small groups. In, in, in small groups, smaller gatherings. Paranormal unity isn't a problem, like like you just mentioned. It's the territorial territorial pissing matches that people get into. You know, it's the uh, my data is better than your data, or bigger than your right. data, bigger than your data. My evidence is up your evidence, sure. right? Yeah, you know, and let me call my big brother, and you call your big brother, and you, whatever. Um, oh, yeah. is, and I, and I or, don't want to say, or, you know, just to go back to something, not to interrupt you, Eric, but. To go back to talking about giving presentations and things like that, you know, when I say it's paranormal entertainment, um, I, I'm, when, I'm, when I did this presentation, um, I had that, uh, what a lot of people would say, that that for keeping you on the edge of your seat. And, I, you know, I did give it to you, I did give it to you straight, 
Um, you know, I, I don't want to add any dark stories or anything of that nature. Um, you know, but going into the presentation itself, um, you know, before I actually take the stage or whatever, you know, I do have this intro that I go through. Um, you know, and it's and it's a it's a it's a very very um, as you can say, it's kind of like a hair very very hair raising, um, very very suspenseful intro that goes into me coming out and speaking. So I also like to try to give people that entertainment value, that shock value that they come for, and then I give it to them the way that they need to be told. You know, and that's the best thing about presentations is people walk away and think. Well, that wasn't, that didn't seem like this long, boring, drawn out lecture. This was what kept me on the edge of my seat. And, you know, it, it, was, it was fantastic. I, you know, I'd, I'd come see you again. And, you know, and that's what it's all about. And my, all, up until this point, all the money that I've, that I've ever charged at the door has all gone to a charity. I've never pocketed a dime from anything that I've ever done in the paranormal. And that's, that's to be respected. Trust me. Um, that that I just so you know that's also one of the things on my bucket list is to actually show up to one of the tinny talks that you you join him at. That's on my bucket list. Yeah, John Tenney's a great guy. Yeah, he is. Um, he, he, he's he, he's a very intellectual fellow. Um, you know, I had the, the opportunity to meet him the first time uh, at, at an SNP conference uh, back about two years. I think it's 2010, uh, 2011 actually, and. Um, yeah, John, John and I, we got along, you know, pretty well off the bat. Uh, really, really good guy. Um, I worked with him, you know, obviously we've, I've had him at one of, one of my events here in Fort Wayne. Um, he's great to listen to talk. He's, like I said, he's very intellectual, he's a knowledgeable guy. But, you know, even, even out of the spotlight, off the stage or whatever, uh, he's, he's a super great guy, very down to earth, very fun to be around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like John a lot. I, I don't have a bad thing to say about the guy. Yeah, John. John's one of those rare. He's one of those rare ones. John's just fun. Yeah. He can sit there and be serious Professor John Tinney for like hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and then he produces stuff like Professor Z. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, he's a bear of a fun. There's no doubt about it. And, and he's a very, very creative guy. He's a very creative mind. Um, and that's something. That's something I wanted to talk with you about tonight. Um, what? How important? Because these skills are not taught in school anymore. How important do you think it is to be a free thinker when you go out on a paranormal investigation? Oh uh, man, yeah, and that, that's a great question, Eric. Because you know, I believe that a lot of people, especially a lot of skeptics, um, I think that if, if people if people don't believe and people don't allow their mind to be open, uh, you know, without you know, obviously letting themselves get too psyched out, but just just relaxing themselves and, and, and being willing to um, have a paranormal experience. I think that's the best that's and the most important thing. Uh, because I, I do believe that as skeptics, I, I think it's, it's very possible that people can unknowingly block things out. You know, and, and that's, that's just that, like I've always told people, you know, as a skeptic, you know, it's, it's okay if you don't believe, but don't shut it out either. At least be willing to accept it if it is out there and, and see for yourself. And, and um, rationalize if you will, but if you have a question, come talk to me. You know, something like what you said earlier was, is we, you know, I don't give a shit what other people think. You know, when I first said this out, I wanted to tell skeptics and change skeptics. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to tell them about the investigations. I wanted to change their minds about what they believed and what they didn't believe. And I just realized that, you know, you can't do that to people. You just can't. And it's a waste of time to do it. You know, and that's kind of where my road started with, you know, that that whole talk process. I said, well, you know, I, I, I really don't give a shit what other people think, you know, and the reason why it is is because I'm kind of on a personal mission, you know, and uh, I, I, I do love to share my personal mission with other people. If you want to listen, that's great. If not, no, you know, no harm, no foul. Yeah. I, I totally, totally, I, I back that statement up 100%. You know, and that, that, but, once again, that also goes back to actually doing investigations. And because we've talked about this a lot recently, the people that get attachments and have problems when they paranormally investigate are the people that come squealing up sideways that just dropped off kids at 12 different babysitters. You know, they're only doing this because they, 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 they think they can talk to somebody. You know, they, they come running up at the last minute joining the group. 
they're not focused on what they're fixing to do. Those are the people that have trouble with attachments. The people that walk in, know why they're there, know what they want to try to do, and have a specific plan in mind and are confident in the outcome of that plan, those are the people that never have trouble with attachments. Well, it's also the people who walk in after a fight with their husband or wife. Exactly. They're in a bad mood or they're sick or someone they know is very ill, but they're going to show up anyway just to prove they can do it. Right. And those are the people who wind up getting attachments or, yeah. so if you're, it, or it's doing something coffee. stupid and falling down steps or something. Yeah. Or breaking into Yeah, places. you know, it's funny. It, it's really funny that you should mention the attachments because, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, and, and never until recently do I ever think that I've ever brought anything home with me. Uh, you know, but uh, my my other house that I lived in that I built actually in 2006, but you know, I knew it wasn't an old house by any means. Um, you know, there, there towards the end, you know, right before we moved, you know, it was, there were things that were going on in my house that I couldn't explain, and it wasn't like I was discussing it with other people because I wanted to, I wanted to see if other people would see it and react. And over the over the course of two years, there was there was probably eight or nine different people who witnessed uh, a, a lot of different things in the house without knowing anything about it. Well, you you're in a newer house. What what would be the last thing in the world that you would think about? It would be haunted, right? You know, um, and all the questions were the same. You know, I just. There's somebody here, there's a girl here, there's a voice of a girl, um, you know, we, we all heard it, and it was a, you know, it, it would, you know, you would hear this, like somebody was talking upstairs, and you would be like, excuse, you'd be like, huh? Like somebody was talking to you, you'd be like, there's nobody there, you know? And uh, I just thought, you know, there's just, just no reason for this to be happening, you know, if I hadn't brought something home with me. Possible she, she is it possible she she belonged to the property and not the building itself? Well, even even when it came back to the history of Fort Wayne, which is full of, full of Native American history, uh, Miami Indians, um, you know, mostly here. But the, the point, the problem is, is that up where, where we were um, actually situated, you know, that there wasn't anything that you know that was developed there. It was actually the entire area has all been recently developed in the last fifteen years. It used to be nothing but forestry at one point, you know, um, and we know that you know, all of the, the settlements and, and, and forts, uh, General um, uh, Anthony Wayne, and, uh, you know, all of them, it was you know, towards, more towards the downtown area, out towards the 24 and Wabash, Indiana area. So, you know, there wasn't any reason why there should have been anything with the land beforehand. Um, that doesn't mean that there wasn't that, I mean, what I could find, there wasn't anything that I could correlate with the land as far as I was concerned, you know. And, and it is what it is. I was laying in bed one night. You know, here's an example. Four o'clock in the morning, uh, I just wake up and I just open my eyes. Completely alone in my house. I live there. Two stories on my upstairs. Um, and my bedroom door just comes comes open. It's just it unlatches. It was closed. You hear, you hear the latch. It opens up probably every two and a half, three foot never happened before. It wasn't due to, you know, a, a draft from, you know, the AC, the right. heat, the windows weren't open. There was nothing of that nature. It wasn't like it just jarred itself and sat there against the gym. This thing actually opened up and I watched it, you know. And I sat there until about 4.30 with my eyes open just wondering, you know, what the hell is going on? Yeah. What, what just happened? And, and, you know, so. And maybe that's something that people should know is it's, the stuff you see, the stuff you just hear, you know that needs to be in one category. But when you start talking about the the PK incidences, the psychokinesis, where stuff like you said, unlatches, knobs turn, um, drapes and stuff move in a non drafty area, that kind of stuff. When that stuff starts happening, that's when you really need to pay attention because that takes a lot more energy from the other side than just that's physical evidence. Absolutely right, right. And pe people no, don't right about that. people don't understand that they I mean because what they see is the triumphant trio um, 
locked down with their, locked down with their film crew inside of a location, and things happen with their non-film crew. Yeah, and that's that's the whole point. That when they see the stuff on the TV, it doesn't happen like it happens on TV. That stuff is edited for entertainment, and we can't stress that enough. <coughs> because we've been on locations where we've had a spirit follow us for three rooms across a hospital. Well, because I... all three rooms were connected, and it it actually moved moved vertical blinds in all three rooms yep. w- when we ask it to. Yep. So I mean that's that's yep. PK yep. that's PK activity. That's something from another realm, universe, what dimension, however you need to, to think about it, coming into ours and affecting things. Well and that wasn't just us. It no. was it was the two of mm-hmm. us and two guys from a completely different team that from we had GPI. never met before. Mm-hmm. Who all witnessed sure. this in this room, these rooms. But people need to know how important it is to take note of stuff like that. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the better things that happened at Central State for me when we were, when we were there this summer, and to be honest with you, we were there for 14 hours, and I, and I can tell you that there was minimal activity as far as personal experiences for me the entire evening. It wasn't like this place was alive, you know. I mean, it wasn't just like one of the most exciting places I've ever been, even though it's one of my favorite places, but... As we were walking past the men's dormitories, it was dark, but there was plenty of moonlight, clear skies, beautiful night, little crisp, and, um, you know, the windows were all built out in all these buildings. There's no windows, there's no doors, some of them being partially torn down on the inside, you know, and I look up, and there's a, there's a guy standing up there in, in the window, and he's kind of looking out the window with his head back and looking at us, and then when I look up, he kind of ducks back into the window again and kind of you know, kind of goes backwards a little bit. So I keep looking, I keep looking, I don't take my eye off it at all. So as I was walking up on the window, I see, and I look back, there's nothing but a wall there. You know, it's completely gone, completely disappeared. We just ran into the building. There was, you know, there was nobody else that was there. I mean, it was, you know, it, the, the guy looked like he was in a gown. It, he looked like it was you know, a partial apparition of a head and shoulders. Um, very, very hard to make out any detail. It happened in a split second, but I knew what I saw. You know, and um, that that got to me. That got to thinking. You know, is when we make communication. Sometimes when we make communication, you, you know, we wonder is it interdimensional. Um, you could even go into physics and, and and talk about you know um, the differences in, in time and our time space continuum and tapping in and through frequencies and things of that nature. But it was it was a full body apparition right in front of me that I saw, like he was a normal person. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was thinking the, the, the enormous amount of energy that that took in order for that to happen. You know, so, you know, it was, I wanted to get into the building. Of course I wanted to know that, you know, I, then I was absolutely turned on. It was, you know, three quarters of the way through the night. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm, at this point I'm pretty pumped up, you know, to get in and investigate even more. But uh, it was definitely a, a, an experience. You know, it's not the first time I've seen Shadow Figure full by the Um but it is one of the first times that I ever saw something that looked exactly like a real person that was just, just completely disappeared. Yeah, the the, the full body, and that's, I'm not going to say it's the Holy Grail, but it of, of all the visual stuff that you can experience, that is definitely at the top of the top of the heat because, the, I mean, that's what, that's what keeps you going, isn't it? The, 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 experiences, yeah, the experiences like that, and, you know, when you go and collect six or eight hours worth of audio data and you get that one really clear EVP that you know the situation in the room and, and whatnot and you know that it couldn't have been anybody in the room, it's the stuff like that, that's what keeps the fire lit with me anyway. Well, and that's, and that's just it, Eric. It is, you know, you know as well as I do, and that's the biggest misconception in, in the field is that all of these places you see on television, all these places that are reported to be haunted, they're really not no. most of the time, you know. And, you know, I've done some, some what I would consider some pretty damn good case management over the years, you know, and there's just been times where I'll we went a year dry spell without gathering one single piece of usable evidence for anything. Yeah. Wasn't like we have personal experiences, but it just happens. And a lot of times personal experiences and evidence just don't happen, but, you know, every four or five investigations, and there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of shadow figures. I in dozens in, in my day. Um, 
I've tried to photograph them. I've tried to I've tried to video record them. Uh, I've been unsuccessful with with all attempts. You know, well, we've even done some experimentations in the field with not using um, you know IR lighting for the fear that maybe the IR lighting was glitching out the shadow masses. Uh, you know, if it were to be moving around, you know, so, you know, that was, that's probably the toughest thing in the world is to have that happen in front of you and not be able to capture it. Um, you know, so that's, that's something that's important to me to get out there and, and try to figure out a way to get through that. You know, you can't control that. I mean, what, I mean, but what about the evidence that we have? What about the evidence and the personal experiences that we have that we haven't been able to show people? Why can't we? You know, that's what I think about. Yeah. Well, you're 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 like a, there. There's starting to be a line in the sand, and you're part. I know what side of the line you're on, but there's a line in the sand drawn, and there's people that are out there for the thrill of it, and there's people on the other side of that line that are wanting to ask the hard questions: the how are they communicating? Why are they communicating? When do they communicate? Can we replicate it? Blah 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 blah. I mean, when you start asking those hard questions, a whole lot of people kind of they drop off. You know, Kim phrased it really good about. About two years ago, she called it she called it the black suburban syndrome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The problem with it is, uh, to be completely honest with you, is, is that a lot of these people out here think that because they've watched the hunters, they the ghost hunters, that, that they're ready to go out and do a paranormal investigator. You, you can go on ghost hunt without even having, having seen a paranormal show, but the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that... Um, is, is that, you know, when you, when you get out there and you want to, you're going to do what you're going to do, you know, you, you're going to pick and choose what you're going to do. If you want to do it for staying there for the wrong reasons, uh, you'll, you'll ruin interest very, very fast. Um, you know, and that's just the thing that I tell people, you know, before you go out in the field, you know, you should be, do some research, do some reading. Um, you know, get out, get out into the library and, and you know, you know, make yourself known. The knowledge. Let's see. How do I want to put this? Make yourself knowledgeable in what you're doing before you get out there and, and, and investigating. You know, that's that's the biggest thing that people don't do. Um, and because of that, people have a fear of being made fun of, or being shot down, or being ridiculed in the field. And that's why you don't have people out there. Um, that are putting enough theories out there, that are putting data out there. Um, you know, I don't want to just collect data at, at my investigations. I'd, Eric, I'd love to have the data from your investigations with the fucking data that I want. I yeah. want to know what you're getting under what conditions and things like that. You know, I mean, if you're a trustworthy source, you know, and you're, you're not a good good to me, that's one less investigation I have to do to come to some sort of a conclusion. I've been told that I've been wrong before. I have been wrong before. Sometimes, and a lot of times, theories don't pan out. Um, I've been ridiculed. I've been put down. Um, you know, but the fact of the matter is, is that the amount of people who do this stuff is, is overwhelmingly larger than that other group. Yeah. You know, and you just uh, get back up, dust yourself off, suck it, suck in your gut, stick out your chest, have some pride, keep your chin up, and just roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's just not enough people out there that are willing to put themselves out there like that because they're afraid of being ridiculed or make fun of yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm glad you mentioned about making yourself knowledgeable because a lot of people, a lot of people now that are getting into it from the thrill-seeking side of it are coming up with what they think are these absolutely groundbreaking experiments, and they'll explain them as such on social media. But if they actually did a little reading on the history of not only spirituality but of paranormal research, you know, they'll run across like Hans Holder and all of the thousands of experiments that he did. So if you go back and do a little history and do a little bit of reading, a little bit of work, you won't waste your time doing things that other people have already done. Or bragging on yeah. stuff that other yeah. people have yeah. already done. Or bra Yeah, and then thinking that you're changing the world when somebody, when the very first thing that's going to happen is going to go, hey, you copied that from Hans Holder, he did that in 66, and, you know. John Tenney did it again in 83, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. So I mean, people, you, I can't, I can't stress that enough. People do need to do make themselves knowledgeable before they go out to do their very first one. But see, that, yeah, that's you know, the difference between ghost hunters, investigators, and researchers. Ghost hunters yeah. don't care. They don't ask for permission. They go wherever the heck they want. They think provoking's fun. They think everything's a demon, and it's all a thrill. 
those are ghost hunters. Investigators have realized, okay, that's going to get us in trouble. Let's pick it up a notch and, you know, do a little research, get the permission, stop this kind of stupid stuff. And then there's the researchers who've watched everybody else and gone, no, we're not even doing that. Let, let's get down to the bottom, scratch the books, you know, talk to the real people like Tinny and all of them and stop playing the let's be popular game. You know, this is this is this is something that I, that, I, that I've been just screaming and talking to you. either you guys or not or somebody else about on a radio show. I mean, if there's I don't know, if there, is there a is there a chat room going on during the show right now? Yep. Is there, is there any conversations going on? No, not really. Plenty of people. Okay. Well, this is what I just want to just share with everybody. Is that last Wednesday, maybe maybe it was Tuesday, um, I caught a, a little bit of. Um, Ghost Mine, I believe, is, is on Sci-Fi Network. If I'm, if I'm not oh, mistaken. okay, yeah. No, I, no, I don't watch. I don't watch television very often, um, except Big Bang Theory. That's my stuff. But um, I don't watch television very much. But you know, I, I caught about ten minutes of the show. I noticed that they were using the Q2 meter in the mine. Yes. You know, and I, I think I said, you know, what comes to mind when you think about that? You know, they're getting random spikes on this K2 meter in this mine. Uh -huh. And I'm sitting here thinking the entire time, you know, if, has anybody thought about the possibility of, of magnetic rock, rock and things like that that's down in these mines with a dog in there and there that's affecting the K2s? You well, know, well, you... I, I saw an episode of Ghost Hunters where they went out to a lighthouse and, um, you know, this, this girl took dowsing rods out to this lighthouse. And I thought, well, wait a minute, weren't dowsing rods originally used for finding water? So if you take the thing out to a lighthouse that you had to actually take a boat out to to get to, how good and how accurate a dozen rods are going to be on an investigation when you're surrounded by water? Will they Is be that not free or that a reading? Am I wrong about that? that hey, yeah. now, I'm a dowser, well, so watch yourself. Well, technically they would be absolutely correct because they would find it everywhere. But you couldn't use them, be, you couldn't use them for anything exactly. else. Yeah, I understand exactly. what you're saying. But I am a dowser. Mm -hmm. No, so, okay, okay, Karen, and I'm not putting dollars down. I know, Jason, I, I am just giving you a hard time. I am not but, worried about but, it at all. But am I, but am I correct? In, in you are. That, that was definitely not, not a very good idea. You you are, I mean, if, if, but you also have to, here it's not so bad. Mm. I don't have to worry about the water thing here as much as we did back home. Mm-hmm. I mean, in St. Louis, you've got the Mississippi, the Missouri, the Merrimack. You've got 9 billion different things of water, so you've got a whole different group of issues you have to deal with as opposed to Texas. Or anywhere else. Right, right. Absolutely. And it's not, and you know, it's, and it's not that I, I shoot down thousand rods because I know that there's water everywhere, you know, and I'm, I'm not doing that at all because to be able to do my knowledge is, is very, very limited on thousand. Um, I've Seen it used in the field dozens of times. I I don't I'm not not against it or anything like that. But you know it's just it, getting back to the the point is it's it's just that you know you see this stuff on paranormal television and, and people don't think about that kind of thing. You know well, why is, they, why is the K2 erratic? I mean does anybody know what happens when you take a, a magnet to an electromagnetic field meter? <laughs> well, that, that would that would be like doing a kite experiment in downtown Chicago, you know? If the kite right. flies, then it's paranormal. You, you have to right. learn where you can and can't use particular pieces of equipment. Well, and, and, and we've talked about this before, Jason, but Hannah House was a perfect example. How many groups showed up out there with 2000 or $3,000 worth of equipment on the table? And one group at the last time when we met you there... One group I actually asked, they said that th they had just got all this stuff in the mail, and you could not only buy a T-shirt, a cup, and a cap from them. But and some, a bumper sticker. And a bumper sticker. But sometime later that evening, they were going on their first investigation. And I can guarantee you these people have never read. Most people have never read their instruction manuals for these stuff when they get them. Melmeter, whatever. Because you see people yeah, jerking around with a melmeter. 
if you read your book, even the better, unless he's changed it majorly, the millimeter cycles once every three seconds. So if you move it faster yeah. than once every three seconds, you're not even going to get good information from that. So I mean, people yeah. people don't even do it. They're just they're they're monkey see monkey do off the TV, and, and I hate to say that, but that's what it is. Well, how many people are walking around with a K two with a penny shoved in it? Yeah, and a K two a K two makes a great yeah, doorstop. Yeah, exactly. Style. That was my biggest pet peeve about ghost hunters back in the day was the fact that I said, you know, how ridiculous does that does that look to anybody? I mean, does, does anybody not un understand that that could be possibly you know contaminating the, the the functionality of that meter by putting the penny into the button like that. And I thought about that 10 years ago. Yeah, but how you many know, people and, now do you see with, like, in public investigations? Look around. You will find at least one person with that stupid penny shoved in there now. Yeah. You know what I saw? I saw a couple months ago, and it, it was it was really funny. I had to chuckle about it. It was some team this idea was going to take a picture of all their equipment. They, you know, they set it out on the table and had it you know, all nicely arranged and, and all this thing. They had, you know, like 12 K2 meters, okay? Like five millimeters, like I'd some some stupid number, astronomical number of, of voice recorders. I want to say it was probably about 20, 25 voice recorders, parabolic microphones, headphones, the whole thing was. And I thought, you know, geez, there's not even a notepad in that entire inventory of equipment. Right. You know? I don't go into an investigation without a freaking notepad in my hand. So if I have my notepad and my recorder, that's all I need. Yeah. And people don't people don't, you know, understand. I, people I don't, don't understand know. That. I don't know. I have to argue that Mary has the trap cam that I absolutely love. And and you know that's the one reason, the tra trap cams, like the, the, the hunter's trap deer trap cams? The motion detection cams. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yeah. You're talking about trail cams. Yeah, trail cams. They've, they've become so very popular, but like, like Kim was saying, they're, they're, that's because their motions, it takes a certain amount of motion to set them off to begin with. So yeah. they, they become a very valuable piece of equipment. And those I really like because every time Mary's used it in one particular location, we've realized every time it snaps a picture, the temperature goes up, not down. So it's not cold spots, it's hot spots in this place. Well, is there, is there a possibility that could that be affected by the IR? Is there a flash in that that, that could create heat at that point in time? Not, not, three or four, or anything like that? not three or four degrees like that. No. Okay. Sure, sure. I can understand where you're coming from. That's and really it's cool. the Shanley Hotel. That's the other thing, well, that's see, the other thing see, I was going to do is we believe, we, we believe in the field that cold spots are associated with paranormal investigating. They think that the reason why that is is because the entity is taking the most natural uh, um, kind of energy out of the air with heat, correct? So if, if, if the entity is taking in heat and you're overstanding with your with your, your thermometer or your your meter in the cold spot, you're in the wrong area because it, it, the, the heat was drawn from that spot. It doesn't necessarily mean that's where the entity would be standing. You would almost think theoretically that you would be looking for a warmer area, um, you know, being that it was taking in the heat, right. you know, if, if that makes sense. Well, see, the, the last time she used it was up at the Shanley Hotel, and from 9.30 to, what was it, 4.15 4 in the morning, the temperature had never changed. It was 59 degrees. The so trap that's cam... That's like a map map look, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. and, and the oh, trap right. cam took two, two pictures at 4.29. Within a minute's time, and the first picture, it jumped one degree... The second picture, it jumped another three degrees. It would not go up four degrees in less than a minute, regardless. Yeah, that's pretty significant. Yeah. But see, that's the great thing. Some of the equipment, almost all pieces of equipment that are used in the paranormal now have been used for something else. But the great thing about that's it is good. some of them, we couldn't have designed any better, like, like the trap cams that, that can track temperature, time of day, you know, all this is on that pic on the pictures when it takes them. It tells you that it's this many degrees. And, sure. and I mean, if it is someone standing there messing around, you get the picture of someone standing there messing, messing around. around. Yeah, so yeah, that's foolproof. There's no doubt about it. And it has all your data right there for anybody to look at. Sure. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, Jason, I hate to do this. Tell people where I I'm putting up a link to your Facebook if they want to send you a message. Um, yeah. When, when, sure. when can people? When can people expect the book? The book will be out 
Um, like I said, late June, early July of next year, I'm going to start um, a, a site for pre-orders probably sometime in May. Um, uh, it'll be probably available through uh, and on, on the website, through Amazon, um, through me at my events, obviously. Um, and if anybody wants to uh, book me for any kind of lectures or anything going on, uh, as far as 2014 year is concerned, they can get a hold of my agent at No Boundaries Media Entertainment. Um, she's also on Facebook as well, so you can look them up there, uh, send her a message, or you can email her, which is also on her Facebook, uh, and set something up through her. I do travel around through uh, the tri-state area and, and even a broadcast that, depending on what my schedule is and how busy I am. So, um, Anybody has any questions can look me up, friend me on Facebook. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be glad to meet anybody who wanted to be my friend. So, I'm his friend. Yeah, me too. Um, and Jason, we wanna, we wanna, we wanna thank you so much for coming on tonight. Um, don't hang up. Let, let us get off air. I got something I want to tell you about off air, but I tell you off air. Um, don't forget, everybody, this holiday season. Don't don't forget to go to metalunaboutiqueandstones dot com to get all of your present needs taken care of. And if you're going out paranormal investigating this weekend, be careful, be safe, get permission. And everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Because we won't see you till then. That's right. We won't see them until next Friday after Black Friday. Yeah. Bye, guys. Night.